first I want to present you uh, the participants here in the front, to my very right, to your very left. It's Michael Kretke. He is professor for political economy and director of the Institute for Advanced Studies at Lancaster. He has taught political science and political economies <coughs> uh, at the University of Amsterdam. He is collaborator of the MEGA, the MEGA, the Marx Engels Complete uh, Edition, and he is memorial uh, of the Rosa Luxemburg Foundation Scientific Advisory Board. Mm -hmm. Then between us there is Frieda Otto Wolf. Frieda Otto Wolf is honorary professor at the of philosophy at the University at the FU of Berlin. He has been active since 1959 in left initiative, so he is somebody who always was involved in the different movements. And from 1994 till 1999 he was member of the European Parliament with the Green Party. Of both you can see a lot of their publications on the website and Frida is in the additional board of the magazine Historical Materialism. Gianpaolo Pato will present himself when he is going to speak. And uh, our panel is on the topic, another power shift, Europe. So in the present situation, in the very actual situation, we can see a new war in Libya is beginning. There has been a disaster, a nuclear disaster in Japan. We know that there is a decline of the US policy and economy New states, new economies are growing up and are getting world power position like China. We have the new situation of the BRICS. And then the question is, with which role is Europe playing within this situation? Which role has Europe played in the last years when we had the economic and financial crisis? At the moment we have the situation that in this war in Libya France and Britain together with the US are involved. Germany rejected a participation. On the other hand, on the situation of the disaster in Japan, Germany immediately stopped six nuclear power plants. So the question is, there, is there a common European policy? or failed the European Union internally and externally. The role Germany within the decisions concerning the financial crisis have been different to the other states. There is no common project by the institutions and you always can see nationalism in the different activities. So, Frida, maybe you start with some answers to this question. Which role is Europe, is the European Union playing? Which role does a different state have in this global situation? Well, I think the important point is that the European Union is in a very critical situation. On the one hand, whereas on the other hand, there is no alternative to the European Union. So, uh, the, I do not expect that the European Union will break apart or uh, be uh, ruined in the near future, but it will have enormous difficulties in playing the role required for some way forward in present human history. Uh, the problem is that the European Union in its present institutional uh, makeup is informed and permeated by a neoliberal design. The, in terms of the single market, the single currency, the big bang enlargement, all were implementations of the new wave of neoliberal restructuring of the EU uh, starting in the late 1980s. 
And this is evidently incapable of addressing the challenges the EU is confronting now. Michael will say more about the euro crisis. Uh, it is absurd to have a single currency without having a common and coordinated <coughs> economic and social policy. It is absurd <coughs> to have a common currency without having at least the outlines of a common foreign policy. Just to quote one uh, absurdity from the existing state of the European institutions, we have two different competencies for monetary policy uh, and for exchange rate policy. Uh, of course, in a neoliberal perspective, exchange rate policy does not exist, therefore this is not a problem. The Council of Ministers is responsible for exchange rate policy and the central bank is, of course, responsible for monetary policy. And this just exemplifies and the problem of uh, financial market supervision, surveillance, and things like that. This is still in the making, but it's not yet fully developed. So there we have an institutional mess which does not address the key issues without having a, an orderly way out because the single market, market cannot be undone and the eurozone, the euro cannot be sort of without major crashes uh, repla be replaced again by national currencies. And in this situation, uh, I think the role of Germany is central because Germany, in fact, has informed most of the decisions which led to this absurd situation and has utilized them in order to fortify and enhance its own position. So practically, no other major power within the European Union is any more capable of imposing an alternative policy can be seen, uh, of imposing an alternative policy which can be exemplified by the power play between Sarkozy and Merkel on a common European economic policy in which Merkel has imposed the German point of view, which is paradoxical because it is declaring a common European economic policy the absence of a positive common European policy and therefore just a uh, reinforcing the German position against the other member states. But this cannot, be, cannot continue indefinitely. And now we are in a situation where, and I would think that, for instance, the British and French engagement in Libya is part of this story, where uh, a new uh, common policy has to be found and where also perspectives of development for the other members of the European Union have to be found in economic terms. And therefore, Germany has to agree to a negotiated way out of the present crisis, which would be more than just financial market control and just uh, macroeconomic formal coordination centered on public debt. Um, and I think we are, this is in fact the core of the present situation. Either the German elites, and there of course the German left and its different parties will play a central role, uh, will give up their neo-mercantilist strategies, which are continuously undermining the cohesion of the European Union and its capacity to act on the international scene, or they will realize that the phase in which neo-mercantilist strategies of Germany serve to reinforce German the German position within the EU is now over because all the others are pressed against the wall 
and now a different logic has to be developed and I hope that this will rapidly take shape and I would even hope that within Germany the relations of power may change very rapidly. Only there are two caveats. The German left parties have no common project of taking over government in Germany and they have no common project for European politics. So this will have to be developed in a situation of rapid change which may continue to develop. We are going to have a series of elections this year uh, already on the nuclear issue. The liberal Christian democratic government <laughs> has given in strategically and only to save its uh, hide in the coming elections and I think this may be the beginning of a process of loss of hegemony. So we may see rapid political change in Germany. We, see, we shall see rapid political change in Germany, I think, at the end of the legislature anyway. And then at least, at, uh, then at the latest, the German left-wing political parties will have to be able to present an alternative and will have to be able to present an alternative in terms of European politics for which they are ill-prepared. That's the, the drama of the situation. Michael. How shall we proceed? <coughs> yeah, yeah. Then then we should fine. proceed and then we can treat them. Okay, good. So, I, as an economist, I will tell you a little bit more about um, what is actually going on inside the European Union uh, and in the relationships between the European Union and the rest of the world. At first glance we have what we all call the Euro crisis, a currency crisis, although I think it is a fake because uh, the Euro is a success story as a world currency, as a reserve currency. It has made a tremendous advance. It has lost something but it has recuperated its terrain within a very f few months, so it is not weak at all. At first glance, we have a currency war, or it looks like that. It's actually denied by many of its participants, but it's going on worldwide. Uh, and that is a third or a fourth stage of the great crisis we have seen unfolding since uh, 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 the autumn of 2007. It started as a financial market crisis, transformed into a banking crisis, an international banking crisis. And due to a lot of uh, political interventions, uh, it transformed again into a sovereign debt crisis. And one result of it, consequence of that, is the transformation into currency wars and currency crises. Well, what is at stake at this moment, I think uh, we see, as we see in every great uh, world economic crisis, an ongoing battle about power and power positions in the world economy, about, of course, the position of the world hegemon, and uh, that battle is going on inside the European Union as well as on the world scale. Uh, the European Union, if you take it statistically as one, is by far the largest and the strongest economic world power that we ever had, far surpassing the United States of America. Although it is not a state, uh, well, it is a very fragile political uh, construction. The European Union is a regional power of enormous impact uh, and it has a lot of policies, not only common policies but by the very same token all the member countries have uh, policies of their own inside the framework of the EU. We have a lot of joint, uh, as you were referring and rightly so, so what is happening in North Africa. Well, since a lot of uh, several years we have the so-called Barcelona process going on which means a concept of the European Union to integrate the whole of the Mediterranean into uh, a zone of influence of the European Union. 
it's not pursued with full uh, speed and full power, but it's part uh, of the, if you like, reach and outreach, even global outreach of the European Union. Uh, recently, uh, in its relations with the United States of America, that are clearly the rival in many parts of the world markets, uh, the uh, European Union or its, its leading member states have uh, gained a lot of uh, ground, in particular in Asia. So if you like, the battlegrounds are the old ones. One is Asia, uh, it is battle uh, for China is going on, uh, and the other is Eastern Europe. Uh, we are fighting, or we are rivals with the United States of America, both in Eastern Europe, in Russia, in Central Asia, and in the wider area of Asia, in particular in China. Um, inside the EU, a very similar battle is going on, and uh, 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 Frida has already mentioned the big culprits, uh, by far strongest and largest economy within the EU, that has pursued a very aggressive export strategy for several decennia now, with a lot of success, is Germany and the fight within the Eurozone and about the Eurozone and within the EU is about the position of this very powerful player. Well, uh, you all know there are, is a group of countries called the pigs and sometimes it's a pigs with two eyes when we include Italy, which is not a very kind thing to do, but sometimes we do. And these are obviously or apparently in trouble Curiously enough, one can explain very quickly why they are in trouble, because they were such uh, brilliant uh, pupils uh, and learned the lessons of neoliberalism, neoliberal macroeconomic policies so well. Uh, Greece, for instance, was extremely successful in pursuing a policy of low taxes. And it was praised for that for many years. It was the country with the lowest uh, tax level in the whole of the European Union and everybody was thrilled by it. Actually, that seems to be now actually uh, it, it, one of its big weaknesses. Or the Irish, they pursued a very uh, similar policy. Uh, all these countries, to different degrees, also Portugal, also Spain, pursued a policy of building up huge credit bubbles, an expansionary strategy built upon debt and mountains of debt, in particular private debt, and they were quite successful for a while. Um, <clears throat> well, until the beginning of the world crisis in 2007-2008, None of these countries, except Italy, had any serious problems with the public debt. Uh, they were uh, very sound and very stable. Now they are in, in, a, in a predicament and behind the obvious uh, financial distress there is something that has been built up for years. Uh, there is a fierce competition going on inside the European Union and uh, as a consequence of that, through the years, uh, very strong imbalances have been built up. Well, the same picture that we have in the world economy, there are some huge deficit countries, like the United States of America, and other huge surplus countries, like the People's Republic of China, and they are in a symbiosis. The one cannot live without the other. Hmm? Uh, we have exactly the same picture inside the European Union, very huge imbalances and Germany is by far the biggest, the strongest surplus country and it needs, as a big exporter, Germany is by far the strongest exporting economy in the world. Don't believe that is China now, it's only a statistical artifact. Uh, the impact of Germany is much stronger and it is also by far the most export dependent country, not only in Europe but in the world. So the Germans need this, they live by it, uh, and so they need the deficits in the neighboring countries. Uh, they cannot operate uh, otherwise. Well, this is a, ba a basic problem that has been built up for years. It's not just yesterday or the last two, three years. Uh, it has been growing and growing and everybody saw it coming and everybody knew it was there. So this is... Uh, uh, also important, because uh, even in financial terms, if you translate it into financial terms, 
uh, the sovereign debt crisis of the so-called PICS countries is a European country, uh, uh, crisis because nearly everything, far more than 90% of these sovereign debts are European debts. American banks are involved as well, but always in a minor position. Uh, in the case of, well, Greece for instance, the Portuguese banks have much more uh, uh, Greece bonds uh, in their treasuries than uh, US banks. Hmm? So it, it is first and foremost a European problem and that is why the Europeans have dealt with this and have dealt with it uh, by a series of bailout uh, uh, actions, uh, collective actions of the governments of the Eurozone plus European central banks and that was pushed again and again uh, so it's a long story unfolding with different acts in the drama, but every, in every single drama, every single step, you see the massive intervention of the lords of the financial markets, including the rating agencies, which are the huge free rage agencies, are all American or American-dominated. They are private enterprises, and they have a lot of stakes in these financial markets, so it's, it's part of the very weird structure we have now worldwide. In every single step in this unfolding drama of the sovereign debt crisis, the rating agencies intervened and uh, pushed the governments in a certain direction. And at every single event, they got exactly what they wanted. There was a bailout, and the bailout was linked to a whole package of conditions imposing a very strict austerity policy upon these countries. That is what the lords of the financial markets think is sound fiscal policy. And the Greece and the Irish and the Spanish to a lesser degree, they all got the full brunt of it. Um, so that is what we have done. Uh, and it was to a certain degree inevitable for a simple technical reason. Uh, sovereign debt is permanent debt. Uh, since more than 300 years. It is one of the basic institutions of modern capitalism. It's not a secret. It's only part of the system as we know it. Which means that these huge amounts of these debts have to be refinanced every year. So you can simply count it, you know it in advance. Uh, several hundred uh, billions of euro of sovereign debt in the Eurozone have to be refinanced every year. And if you are not smart enough, and if you do not have a lot of long-lasting uh, bonds, uh, which only maturate after 20 or 30 or 50 years, which many countries ha actually have, if you are a little bit stupid, and so a, a larger part of your sovereign debt is only running for 12 months or 14 months or something like that, so you're always on the hook uh, of the financial markets. And that was what actually was happening. The refinancing was a big problem. That is what the speculation came in. So we had waves of speculation against euro denominated assets uh, uh, throughout this unfolding drama. Well, what is most important in political terms is that uh, uh, by uh, uh, bailing out these countries, uh, the actually old regime of the Maastricht Treaty, the Stability and Growth Pact, uh, the fiscal orthodoxy has been re-established and reaffirmed again and again. One could have done it, of course, otherwise uh, and uh, uh, used this opportunity for a radical reform of the way in which uh, the macroeconomy of the larger of the Eurozone or the EU at uh, large uh, has been run, but we have always tried, all the governments, and first and foremost the German government, uh, have tried to re-establish the norms of fiscal stability, which meant austerity policies, and the, uh, if you like, even decisive trick in this whole operation has been, it was on the initiative of the German government, to involve the IMF. The IMF has never been created for that, but now it is part of this uh, operation, bailing out and putting financial discipline, fiscal discipline, a uh, very rigid uh, form upon uh, the sovereign governments of EU or Eurozone member states. 
um, in order to satisfy the needs or the ideas, or if you like, the dogmas of the lords of the financial markets. Well, uh, during this unfolding drama, which is not ended yet, it's still going on, and it can come back every minute, it will come back this year, because again, we have uh, nearly a thousand billion Bureau of Refinance, uh, different countries are involved, uh, and because the Germans also know they have a lot of several hundred billions to re of German public debt to refinance this year, they did everything to keep the financial markets as good friends. Hmm? They didn't want a tax against their uh, own uh, government bonds. But throughout this unfolding drama, the basic weakness of the construction of the European Union and the construction of the Eurozone, the common uh, uh, currency, uh, has been well, revealed again, you would say. It was clear from the very beginning. It has actually been criticized uh, uh, publicly from the very beginning that you have a sort of some common institutions, some common policies, but not the full package. We have a common monetary policy, which is subdivided between different authorities, but we do not have what every national government has, what every central bank in the world has, the backing of a common macroeconomic policy within the very same constituency, within the very same economic and political space. We don't have it, and we have a well, we lack legit legitimacy, democratic legitimacy in many respects in the construction as it actually is. Um, our, our European Central Bank it has been forged upon the model of the Euro German Bundesbank, which means that it has inherited a certain type of monetary orthodoxy, uh, 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 which is quite different from uh, the orthodoxy that prevails, for instance, in the U.S. Fed. The U.S. Fed is a different institution with a different outlook and a different programmatic, different uh, tradition also of uh, uh, monetary and, and, and fiscal action. The European Central Bank is, if you like, completely focused upon a battle, a fight against e inflation, even if in, in moments if there is no inflation. Hmm? They still continue to fight the specter of uh, inflation all the time. So it was quite uh, uh, remarkable that to a certain degree this orthodoxy has been weakened during uh, and to even uh, uh, extremely in the perception of some uh, central bankers in the Eurozone. Uh, uh, during these recent uh, bailout uh, actions. That was an opening, but more, not more than that, because everybody immediately told each other, well, we will return to the sound policies, to the orthodoxy, as quickly as uh, possible. So still we don't have uh, a common macroeconomic policy beyond the national le level, and we have no forum, although we are talking about it a lot, but where, in political terms, we could really tackle the obvious problem of the huge imbalances inside the Eurozone, inside the EU. That would, of course, be very difficult because, and some governments, like the French governments, have addressed it openly, uh, because it means that we will, would have to take some sort of common action against the supremacy, the power, of the German export machine, which is based upon a two-pronged strategy. One prong is called beggar thy neighbor, and the other one is called beggar thy own people. They do it both, and with full speed and full consequence for many years. So when it shouldn't be underrated <laughs> what is going on there. Uh, it is possible, and that is why the position of the left is so important, in particular in Germany, uh, because we have a lot of openings in these situations of crisis where everybody is scratching his head and uh, many people are at a loss for a good way out and everybody is falling back upon orthodoxies. But there are openings uh, and the possibility, the need for a common 
uh, economic governance within the European uh, uh, Union and within the Eurozone is, is quite obvious. It has even been proposed and propagated by the German government. The German Chancellor, Mrs. Merkel, has argued, and she has obviously won the battle, because she got this as a concession, we need a common economic government. Well, the crucial question, of course, is when you have this, this sort of agreement or paper agreement, okay, we will have a common economic government, what does this government do? What sort of policy do you get? Well, the German answer was we get the old policy only with a little bit more force. Hmm? Uh, we will impose more pressure upon our neighbors to follow the guidelines of the one and only, and that is the age-old dogmatic fiscal orthodoxy. That is what actually is happening, happening now, and that is why it is so important that the left in Germany, as Frieda said, and here we completely agree, doesn't have a coherent answer to that and doesn't have any idea, or except some individuals, of course, and smaller groups have ideas about that, quite, quite sound ideas, how to deal with the larger structural problems of the Euro European Union as such and the Eurozone. It is possible to impose or to propose a program of structural reform, which would also involve a reform of our whole well, energy system, uh, our whole infrastructure. We have a lot of common problems because we are a tiny part of the world. Huh? Uh, it's, 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 the problems are relatively small if we compare them to China uh, or to Russia or even to the United States of America. Huh? Uh, we, we could do it uh, with our resources much quicker and much more effectively. The uh, 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 core problem still is the prevailing mood of national policies, in particular in Germany, uh, which can be used uh, very easily and very quickly, and the lack of any consensus about a turn against the Treaty of Maastricht. And I can only repeat, that used to say to my philosopher, political philosopher friends, if you want to know where hegemony, hegemony is today, look into the newspapers, look into the blogs, you will find it everywhere. Hegemony is nothing else but vulgar economics in the heads of everybody, including the trade unionists, including the leftists, not only the Social Democratic Party, but also in the left party. Uh, most of us, many of us, think in these vulgar economic terms. You can test it. Everybody believes if we have more and more public debt, this will lead to inflation. Nonsense. It doesn't. Not automatically. But most people believe that. And most people can be very easily scared by that. Hmm? And that is the power of wrong ideas, mystifications. But they are there. They are very, very real. Okay. Thank you very much. <coughs> okay, thank you very much. Now, <coughs> Gianpaolo. <coughs> so our topic is another power shift, Europe. We have heard there is a common currency, there is a big single market, there is a Maastricht Treaty as common European policy. But on the other hand, we have a diverse policy within the European Union. We have inside and outside huge imbalances. Europe is one of the big players. We have the decline of the US policy. We have a new role of China, of, of the BRIC states. But Actually, we can see that we have different policies concerning Libya, Germany is not with the war, France and Britain are in the alliance. We have a different policy concerning nuclear power plants. After the disaster in Japan, Germany is closing nuclear power plants. Italy has a special role. We have no 
ec common economic government like we have heard. Non, non esiste un governo comune economico come abbiamo sentito. No, we have a common political government. E non c'è nemmeno un governo politico. So this was very strong a perspective Questa from a German point of view. Molto forte dal punto di vista, dal punto di vista della Germania. You should give us the Italian point of view. E quindi dobbiamo sentire dal punto di vista italiano. Sì. Io mi scuso per il ritardo che è dovuto a una incomprensione sull'ora. Uh, I apologize for my being late and was due to a misunderstanding about the scheduling of the conference. E sono molto d'accordo con le considerazioni che sono state sviluppate prima di me sulla crisi finanziaria. Sia I absolutely agree with the former considerations uh, regarding the financial crisis and the way in which uh, this topic has been addressed so far. Sia per quanto riguarda quella relativa alla speculazione privata, sia per quanto riguarda la crisi finanziaria dei debiti pubblici. Both regarding the private speculation and also uh, uh, regarding uh, the, the public death of the national entities. Credo comunque che eh, siamo alla conclusione di un ciclo lungo. I, I also believe, however, that we are uh, at the conclusion of a very long cycle. Che sia possibile fare delle considerazioni di fondo, di prospettiva. And that it is possible at the current moment to uh, make some consideration, some bottom line consideration to what the current situation is. Dal dopoguerra ad oggi i tassi di crescita si sono ridotti continuamente decennio su decennio nei paesi dell'Ox. Um, in the aftermath of World II, um, as of now, uh, we have seen that uh, the growth indexes of the uh, euro area countries have been reducing. O o Oxe. Yeah, or the Oxy area, sorry, so the Oxy area. Eh, tre paesi sono già eh, da dieci anni circa a sviluppo zero, sostanzialmente. Three countries uh, already uh, in the last ten years have had uh, a growth rate uh, of zero percent. Giappone, Germania, Italia. Japan, Germany and Italy. Tre paesi industriali. Three very important industrial countries. E grandi esportatori. And great, uh, great countries for exportation. E io penso che eh, sia arrivato a capolinea la possibilità di continuare uno sviluppo sui prodotti tradizionali. I think that the possibility to uh, keep developing by, by uh, producing uh, traditional kind of items and goods has, been, has reached a point of no return. Immobili e beni di consumo individuali. Immobili, immobili, attività immobiliare. Mm -hmm. So real estate and beni di consumo and, and common, uh, common goods. Consumer. Yeah, consumer goods. Poi eh, siamo arrivati a dei costi elevati delle materie prime, anche per eh, la riduzione dei luoghi nei quali si possono estrarre a prezzi a bassi prezzi. Um, we also have reached a moment in which uh, the, the raw materials uh, uh, have known the usual, the traditional low prices also for the reductions of the spaces and the zones in which they can be extracted. La globalizzazione iniziata negli anni Ottanta ha cercato di rispondere a questa situazione di crisi strategica. Uh, globalization beginning in, during the 80s was precisely uh, an attempt to answer to these challenges uh, in terms of uh, free competition. Questo ha comportato una redistribuzione dei poteri e della forza economica sia tra paesi sia tra multinazionali. This have uh, as a consequence had brought um, a redistribution of uh, the power both in terms of 
national entities and also multinational companies. La Banca Europea, la Banca Centrale Europea valuta che il commercio mondiale sia salito di un no, che è un terzo dell'aumento del commercio mondiale sia stato motivato da una verticalizzazione delle produzioni. Uh, the European Central Bank believes that one third of the development uh, in the economy uh, was due to a verticalization of sorry, can you repeat the last part? Delle produzioni. Of productions. Negli ultimi 30 anni. In the last 30 years. Quindi non è sufficiente confrontare le economie dei paesi, ma bisogna considerare all'interno dei paesi chi sono i produttori. So it is not enough to just compare the economies of different countries, but we also need to take a look closely to who the producers are within those countries. Eh, Volkswagen sta diventando il primo produttore di automobili in Cina. Volkswagen uh, is becoming the first producer of uh, cars in China. In competizione con General Motors. In competition with General Motors. Che nello stesso momento è fallita come azienda privata. While at the same time as a company, as a private company, is also, was also bailed out, as, as was bankrupt. Su 10 milioni di automobili prodotte in Cina, solo 500 mila sono prodotte da azienda di proprietà cinese. Uh, about just the 10%? 500 mila su 10 milioni. Ok, uh, 500,000 uh, cars uh, in China are actually uh, produced um, despite the fact that there are 10 million cars produced in China every year. So China produces with its own company only 500,000 of them. I produttori sono Volkswagen, General Motors, Toyota, Nissan, Hyundai. So the producers are foreign and it's Volkswagen, Toyota, Hyundai, Nissan. E si pensa che la Cina in pochi anni raggiungerà 30 milioni di automobili prodotti. We think that in very few years China will reach a point of uh, construction of cars of 30 million items. Okay. okay. Eh, quindi eh, noi dobbiamo prestare molta attenzione eh, all'attività delle multinazionali, le quali, mentre nei paesi Oxe hanno perso durante la crisi anche il 25% della loro produzione, so we need to pay a very close attention to the situation of multinational companies which uh, whereas in the Oxe area countries they have lost the 20, about the 25% of their production. A livello globale la riduzione è stata sotto il 5-6%. At, at a global level this reduction has been and beneath, uh, below the 10%. Uh, la stessa Fiat Italiana, Fiat itself continua a produrre nel mondo 2 milioni di automobili come 15 anni fa keeps producing throughout the world 2 million uh, cars as 15 years ago e in Italia ne produce 600 mila whereas in Italy uh, Fiat only produces 600,000 cars um, yeah. Io credo quindi che eh, la crisi commerciale che è scoppiata tra il 2008 e il 2009 I then I believe that uh, the commercial crisis that exploded in 2008 è stata causata anche da un eccesso di capacità produttiva mondiale decisa eh, singolarmente dai grandi capitalisti. Uh, was also produced by an excess of uh, this capacity of producing that was precisely also led by the main financial and, and uh, um, productors in, throughout the world. So it was an axis of production. Quindi adesso avremo un assestamento con gli equilibri mondiali che resteranno mutati per lungo, per, per lungo periodo. 
So now we are going to have probably a tendency toward finding a new balance uh, with new worldwide balances that need to be still defined in the long term. Quindi oggi come mai le multinazionali, le grandi multinazionali non si identificano con il benessere del paese di origine? Uh, also because right now, uh, present day, multinational companies do not identify themselves with the wealth of the original countries. The the country. yeah. uh, sarebbe quindi necessaria quella scelta politica di cui parlava chi mi ha preceduto di una forte iniziativa pubblica per eh, indicare quale linea di sviluppo per eh, i paesi dell'Occidente. Therefore, it would be absolutely, absolutely agree with what was said before about the necessity for a common line uh, to drive these uh, political interventions to decide what to do commonly about these conditions. In maniera particolare, a sviluppo zero, i capitalisti eh, aumentano i conflitti fra di loro e con i lavoratori. Uh, particularly with the uh, tax of gro a rate of growth zero, uh, capital capitalists increase the competitions among them. E il rischio è che venga messa in discussione non solo l'equilibrio sociale ma anche lo stato giuridico e costituzionale dei paesi eh, europei e dell'Occidente. And therefore the risk we're running is that this competition may also um, uh, call into question our social rights, our social spaces that work. Uh, il quadro giuridico e costituzionale. And, and also the constitutional framework in which European Union moves. Okay. Um, in Europa, come è stato ricordato, invece è prevalsa l'attenzione alla crisi finanziaria. In Europe instead, as it was uh, said before, uh, the attention was focused on the financial crisis. Per le ragioni eh, che venivano ricordate. For the reason that was precisely mentioned. Eh, manca una politica economica che eh, intervenga con la mano pubblica sui settori dove eh, non esistono margini di profitto o uh, um, there is a lack um, eh, l'intervento pubblico nei settori dove i margini di profitto sono inesistenti there is a lack of public intervention especially in those sectors in which the margins for uh, increasing the capacity of producing are very low and low e in maniera particolare nei settori di base dell'economia <coughs> and in particularly in the core sectors of economy ecco. eh, per cambiare eh, produzioni e modello energetico <coughs> so in particularly to change uh, um, strategies of production and uh, energetic model and the energetic model okay. um, invece l'Europa sta concordando un patto di stabilità recessivo instead Europe is negotiating a pact of stability which is recessive eh, più rigido più, più regressivo di quello di Maastricht uh, even more strict than Maastricht one. Eh, che è una delle cause del basso tasso di crescita europeo. Which is one of the causes of the very low rate of growth of European countries. Eh, L'Europa ha scelto di salvare prioritariamente le istituzioni finanziarie private private. Uh, Europe has chosen to, to save, to rescue main, mainly uh, the private financial institutions preferendo discutere della possibilità del default degli stati stessi. Preferring to discuss about the bailing out of the nation state themselves. L'esempio dell'Irlanda è clamoroso. The, the example of Ireland is absolutely uh, evident. Per salvare delle banche si è ipotizzato il default dello Stato. In order to save banks, the default of the state was, was considered as an hypothesis. Quindi c'è un predominio 
del capitalismo finanziario in Europa. So there is a predominance of financial capitalism in Europe. Esiste una debolezza, eh, la debolezza di una visione alternativa anche per la crisi della sinistra e del movimento dei lavoratori. And so there is also, uh, the scenario is also what of, uh, that of a weakness intrinsic to the political left. I problemi appaiono più nazionali e meno tra, uh, meno, eh, ed è meno evidente il contrasto tra lavoratori e capitalisti. So, um, the, the, the problem seemed to be uh, on the national level and it's less evident there is like a, a stark contrast and struggle between capitalists and workers instead. La ragione è nella crisi della sinistra comunista dopo il crollo dell'89. Part of the, of the reason for that is due to the crisis of the political left after uh, 1999 with the fall of the Berlin Wall e il dominio delle idee liberiste nella parte socialdemocratica riformista. And a certain tendency to, to a dominance of neoliberal ideas within the moderate left. La, le organizzazioni sindacali sono, europee sono quindi prive di eh, una proiezione politica degli interessi dei lavoratori che rappresentano. Therefore, the European uh, Unionist organizations uh, lack um, a political vision that's capable of representing the interest of the workers uh, in the European platform. Non hanno la forza di mettere in agenda un cambiamento generale. They don't have the strength to put on their agenda uh, a radical change. E si muovono sulla difensiva del vecchio modello sociale europeo and they move along the lines of the defensive lines of the long-lasting tradition of the old uh, European system. Il più delle volte paese per paese. And uh, most of the times just nation by nation, each one by his own. Quindi i problemi sono generali e la crisi mondiale ha già prodotto grandi sommovimenti nel Mediterraneo e nel Medio Oriente. Hence the problems are very general and as we can see uh, the crisis has provoked in the Mediterranean areas serious crisis and uh, conflicts. Senza un forte governo politico dell'Europa without a very strong central government uh, of Europe avremo delle modifiche, la crisi opererà delle modifiche anche sugli assetti politici e sociali eh, europei. We will see that the crisis will also affect uh, the relationships of the balance relationship uh, within European state members. Ciò è evidente anche dall'assenza da sempre di una comune politica estera europea. This is also uh, due to the, the permanent lack of a common foreign politics of the European Union. L'Europa si è sempre divisa sulle iniziative degli Stati Uniti. Uh, because Europe has always, has never found an agreement, especially in relation to the initiative of the United States. Senza una propria autonoma eh, politica. Without, however, taking an autonomous alternative position ecco. in regard to that. Da ultimo, eh, quello che la, la, il modello economico e sociale che propone la Germania. Lastly, the uh, social and economic model that, Germ that Germany is per proposing per for, for Europe. Europa è lo stesso che la Germania sta praticando al proprio interno. Is the same that Germany is already practicing uh, within its national boundaries. Con uh, retribuzioni ferme da anni. With uh, a block, a stall in, uh, uh, in wages. Dei lavoratori. Of, of workers that uh, for years have been like that. Riduzione di tasse. Uh, tax reduction. Uh, flessibilità del lavoro. Uh, flexibility of the work of workers and, and job market, estesa, estesa. Which, is, which is increasingly extended in proportions. Crisi della contrattazione collettiva. And there is also a crisis of the collective uh, negotiation for, 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 for collective contracts. Uh, 
Questo modello unito al nuovo patto di stabilità creerà gravissime situazioni. And this model, uh, also in, in conjunction with uh, the Pact of Stability, will create uh, serious problems. Okay, thank you. That's it. So, now I give the floor to you. Um, yeah. It wasn't introduced exactly. Pardon? There wasn't a, a, an introduction no, for no, the no, next no, no, I'm just wondering. No, no, you said he was going to introduce no, himself, name. and I don't think. Okay, so I I can do it. Okay. Or you go to intro introduce yourself no, 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 in, in no, no, Italy. No. Maybe no, no, no. you want it Italian or English? English. 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 Okay, <laughs> Gianpaolo Pato. Pata. Pata. He is um, the historical leader of the left part, I would say, of the Italian General Confederation of Labour, the CGIL. He was in the CGIL National Steering Committee and directed the CGIL as European Department till 2006. 2006 because then he became Under Secretary of Health in the Prodi government. He is presently National Coordinator of the 23 Marzo Lavoro Solidi Perfect. Solidaridad. Perfect. Yeah? Okay, sorry. So now we open the floor for for you. If there are any questions, there are a lot. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry that I came late. Uh, Mario Kessler from uh, Berlin, uh, Germany, and and despite my Italian and I don't speak Italian, uh, so I have to ask my question in uh, in English. I would. Could you say uh, for a, for a, for a complete outsider that most that may, might be most of us, with the exception of Eric yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. um, could you say a few words, yeah, about the role of the um, main uh, labor unions in in, in Italy in um, let's say in today's in, in in today's struggle? We all hope that the that the current government is at stake, and I. And my second question is, are there any attempts of the Italian left, and maybe United attempts, to regain, to, to regain a, partial, a, a partial hegemony in all the fields of the media? Is there any electronic media who, which is still on our side? I have also have a question to you, uh, back, back to you too. The diagnosis of the multinationals without a national location, is it, uh, do you apply this to Germany? Because I would doubt it. For instance, Volkswagen is not an ordinary multinational. There's a Volkswagen law which binds it to political institutions. And even German banks and other German multinationals are linked by many links to political instances. So this is a very good example of state monopoly capitalism. And it still is. Neoliberal deregulation has not destroyed these links. It has reorganized them and internationalized them. And second, uh, your diagnosis of the left and the trade unions, uh, you appear to apply it to Germany too. And in Germany there is no crisis of collective bargaining. Uh, the trade unions are gaining in membership and they are gaining even in political capacity. So in Germany we have a problem that the three left parties have no common project and uh, no European project to boot, but uh, there is still a relevant electorate, there is a electoral majority even for the three left parties taken together, and uh, there is a strong trade union movement which is capable to operate independent from a vulgar economy. So uh, there is a chance in Germany uh, which has 
of course, links with the fact that Germany did not go for financialization, but uh, nor for multinationalization. But most of German experts are generated in medium-sized enterprise with local ties. Walter. Benefiting from the fact to be together with you, Mike, I wanted to invite you to... So, so, slowly, sorry, for the translation, so... <laughs> sorry. Uh, I wanted to ask you to comment a bit on the main proposals which are now forwarded with regard to the sovereign debt crisis, namely haircut, partially or total abolishment of the debt, create, uh, issuing of the euro bonds, and um, generally money creation by the European Central Bank. Would you somehow prioritize one of these measures? Are they complementary? Uh, which way you see the relation? And secondly, I would like to ask you if you share the vision that uh, at least methodologically one should distinguish between the structural reasons of the debt crisis, namely the long-standing process of redistribution to the detriment of the mass incomes on the one side, and then the, the short-term effects which led to this sort of crisis, which then have to be tackled more or less in a technical way. How would you describe this relation? Shall we start? Michael, with you. Um, what should I comment on? Well, just because I come to that right away. Um, just because our Italian colleague, and rightly so, mentioned China. Uh, it's an excellent example because the European multinationals, which are still very much European, uh, uh, they are all competing in China. So when we are complaining about the impact of the Chinese export machine, we should never forget that to a very large degree, this is actually, these are European and also American multinationals actually producing and using facilities in China and exporting to the rest of the world. So we are part of it. Uh, uh, the curious thing now is, and that is why I <coughs> jump on it, uh, the Chinese have a Europe policy, of course, and they showed it very recently because they intervened uh, and very, in a very intelligent way into the European financial crisis, supporting well, several of the big countries, buying their bonds, offering support, and so on. So well, they're there, and they clearly know why they're there. On the other hand, the European Union doesn't have any sort of a China policy. Well, there's a lot of talk, but there is no policy, no coherent idea how we will deal with, with Asia. Not even that. It doesn't exist. The BRIC states, you could say originally, and many, it's completely correct to point that out, originally it is a statistical artifact. But two years ago, the BRIC states met uh, in June 2009, and they decided it will no longer be a statistical artifact, they will cooperate. They had already met before informally, but that was the first formal meeting, and from that time onwards until this very day, they are pursuing joint strategies, which means, first and foremost, they are intensifying their relations financial, economic relations, technological research, whatever. So it is a paradox, but now Russia and China, just to take two of them, or China and India have much more intense and much larger level of exchange than any, any time before, than, for instance, while Russia and China still were two communist countries. No, it's much more intense, much more... Uh, developed and going at full speed in all areas. That is highly important. Uh, these BRIC group, the European Union has no answer to that. Huh? Well, we are there, we are everywhere. We are in India, we are in Brazil, the European multinationals, but the European Union has no answer to what, what do we do 
when these statistical artifacts, the emerging countries, the emerging industrializing countries with a very strong developmental state, really start to form a block, and they are doing it. We have no reaction to that. And that is, well, uh, it is worse than incompetence, it is worse than stupidity, it's a real mistake. You shouldn't do that. <laughs> you should have an answer to that. Well, uh, very briefly to the f financial things, uh, of course I have an opinion on, on that, I have spoken now very often. Uh, uh, I think all three measures uh, should be applied. It depends on uh, how bad the situation is. In the case of Greece, I would argue for a haircut, yeah? which means a banking crisis in some other European countries. That is why everybody was opposed to it. Uh, a haircut is a, is a little bit floppy term for actually a, a, a state sovereign debt default, which normally means renegotiating the conditions of a debt, so lowering uh, the, the uh, interest rate or whatever. You can do a lot of things. Actually uh, lowering the load of the debt for the indebted country. That can be done in various ways. And in the case of Greece, I would say yes. And the reason is technical, because at this very moment, uh, the ratio of the interest that Greece has to pay to its regular yearly tax income is above 50%. And that is beyond repair. If you are at that level, you are really in the debt trap and you will never get out of it without this intervention. So in certain cases, I would say haircut is the only way out. In the, uh, most of the other cases, the most <laughs> elegant uh, operation would be the euro bonds. And it's also the one uh, which means that the European, the eurozone countries would collectively operate, uh, normally involving the European Central Bank technically as the uh, uh, intermediator or the central actor on the financial markets, issuing bonds uh, of their own. So using the joint credit, they would not lend money to each other, but they would fuse, if you like, your, their, their credit and their, their weight, uh, which is tremendous, uh, on the financial markets. That would also not only lower the level of the uh, interest rates and so the sheer cost of the indebtedness for many countries, not for all of them, uh, the Germans would have to pay a little bit more, but uh, Greece, for instance, or the Irish, considerably less if you start this operation. But the, uh, with a longer view, the most important consequence would be if you start that, well, you have to have a common financial policy. Uh, if you have a common financial policy, well, you have to have a common macroeconomic policy, so it would push everybody by sheer logic of action into the only sound direction which is developing a coherent concept of collective common macroeconomic policy and using uh, the European Central Bank as the issuer of money where they actually are already doing that and you have to change the rules a little bit. I would rather see uh, the outcome of a reform. If you start that you also have to uh, reform the statutes of the European Central Bank and I would prefer a central bank say of the type of the US Fed to the type of the Bundesbank uh, uh, or shaped according to the model of the Bundesbank as we have it today. So it would be a combination of measures. I couldn't say one hits everything. Uh, uh, you will need several of these and well <coughs> long term and short term of course these are short term measures but they have an implication, they have an impact. It will certainly mean that we will pursue the way, uh, the road towards uh, further uh, monetary unification, uh, because more of the smaller countries will, will join. Um, the euro will get much, much stronger by that uh, in the end. I don't expect it to fall, I don't expect anything to, to fall apart in, in, in the eurozone. Uh, and it would trigger or force us in the direction of a coherent, long-term, which means always structural policy. Structural policy regarding the imbalances in, within the euro, the EU economic region, larger, it's the largest and the best integrated 
the strongest integrated uh, 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 economic region in the world. Uh, we should make use of it. Uh, but a long-term coherent policy regarding the imbalances we have means industrial policy. The British are already starting that. You know? They know, well, we cannot live with an over-dimensional uh, uh, financial sector. We cannot just uh, live uh, in the long run by selling more hot air huh? to each other. <laughs> <laughs> well, they have done so, but the results are terrible. So now they have to redress and reorganize their economy, which means this is, this is the, the country where the Industrial Revolution started. Huh? It has the longest industrial tradition in the world. And now, now they are rediscovering, well, we should have some sort of old-fashioned traditional manufacturing, which still exists, but it is nearly wiped out and nearly marginalized. Huh? They are trying that again, but uh, once you talk about the macroeconomic structure of the whole EU region, well, you will see it is no longer possible that a lot of countries are just uh, subordinate or just at the receiving end of the German export strategy. So we will have to redress and to restructure largely and to decide, well, where will we put centers, European, well, which uh, also in regional uh, terms. We, we already have a regional policy uh, in the European Union. We have a lot of bits and pieces that could be easily used. So the short-term <coughs> measures take away the immediate pressure which is now used to go in the wrong direction. If we do it in the way indicated, it will push us in, in my view, the right direction of more long-term oriented uh, structural macroeconomic policy. If we do that, it does only make sense if we start dealing with the uh, problem of the imbalances, which means that we will have to have a sort of, well, competition policy inside the European Union. And that means that we will have to correct the big mistake of the Lisbon strategy. That is the worst, because uh, we have now declared, since we have accepted and since the Lisbon uh, Treaty is in force, that the principle, the leading principle of whatever we do in this world, in the European Union, is competition. Huh? The ideal of the idiots, huh? as Fourier said, <laughs> one of, huh? Com free competition everywhere. Before, we had the maxim, the leading line, the core idea, harmonization, which is also, well, <laughs> it's not clear what it is, but it's certainly not competition, everybody with everybody else at full speed and at all costs. It's something different. So we should certainly redress that, this big mistake from uh, the Lisbon street, uh, Treaty, and that is why we need uh, a, a European left which at least show, share some core ideas about what is makes sense and what doesn't. Okay. Frida. Well, I would take up from here because I think the main problem is that Europe, that is the European Union and all those structures around it, should find a useful role in the global scene. That is, the question to be asked is, a European industrial policy which would uh, give Europe a useful role to play in the, in the international exchange. And uh, there I think we can also look at the German example, which has exhausted itself in its beggar my neighbor and beggar my population side. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I do think there will be policy changes ahead as uh, concerning nuclear policy, they have just turned around completely. Um, and this means that we have to look again for an industrial base within Europe. Germany has never given up its industrial base. Uh, the German industrial base, on the contrary, even with scientific uh, science policy support, has been expanded. It has not been reduced. And the same should it, it is relatively successful in an international exchange, not just because of wage dumping, not just because of currency dumping, uh, but because they have 
just maintained a, an interesting role which is useful for others. And this kind of utility in the international exchange, and I think ecological conversion comes up as something where the European Union has a unique advance and a capacity to be really an important partner well, in exchange. The world needs the Japanese too. Uh, the Japanese, uh, <laughs> I think there a lot of synergies yeah. can be developed. Uh, so there is a possibility, there is a necessity in international terms, and I think there is an opportunity. As I think this year in Germany, the winds of change are blowing. Jump on your comments. Now, I am in agreement with. La revisione del Trattato di Lisbona? I agree with the need for a revision of the Lisbon Treaty. A little loud. I, I agree uh, with the need for a revision of the Lisbon Treaty. Perché non è vero che attraverso la libera competizione Because it's not true that through a free competition l'Unione Europea viene accelerata. Uh, the, the pace of the European Union uh, gains acceleration, has ex is, is accelerated. Si rischia invece l'esplodere delle contraddizioni. We actually run the risk of an explosion of contradictions. Fra i paesi aumentando gli interessi diversi. Among, among countries by, in, by, by increasing uh, the platform for competitions and, and different interests. Era preferibile una politica di convergenza. It's definitely preferable uh, a policy of convergence. Che per essere attuata ovviamente presuppone un forte intervento politico. Which of course in order to be put into practice requires a strong political intervention. Okay. E, per è vero che... E, La Germania ha sostenuto le proprie multinazionali. It is true that Germany has sustained uh, its own multinational. In, uh, in Oriente, nella, nella loro presenza nel mondo. In the East and throughout the whole world. Come hanno fatto tanti paesi. As many other countries also did. E ciò non toglie che Non sono gli stessi interessi quelli della, della crescita della Volkswagen con quelli della crescita della Germania. However, this does not mean that uh, the interest uh, that Volkswagen has in growing coincides with the interest of Germany as a country. Eh, la Germania, come l'Italia, come l'Inghilterra, la, hanno perso circa il 30% di peso sul PIL mondiale negli ultimi 30 anni. Uh, Germany as Italy uh, and Britain um, they have lost about 30% in GPD in the last 30 years. In GPD global è mondiale. Yeah. Mondiale. Eh, eh, mentre le multinazionali no. Whereas multinational companies uh, did not face the same loss. In Italia, capitalisti italiani sono proprietari di aziende all'estero che occupano un milione e mezzo di lavoratori. Italian capitalists uh, are owners of, of companies that give employment to 1.5 million of workers. La Germania 4 milioni e mezzo. And Germany 4.5. Quindi c'è un grandissimo processo di delocalizzazione so, che sicuramente non coincide con gli interessi nazionali. So there is definitely a very uh, evident process of outsourcing that does not coincide with national interests. Eh, per la prima volta dal dopoguerra con il neoliberalismo C'è, esiste questo divorzio. Uh, for the first time after the Second World War, uh, uh, in the neoliberal system, it exists this separation. Ecco. Eh, 
questo è eh, su, eh, sulla questione eh, dei costi che l'Europa deve pagare per la crisi finanziaria uh, around the questions of the cost that Europe needs to face uh, because of the financial crisis <laughs> Questi sono certi, bisogna discutere se si pagheranno a favore dei privati o se saranno utilizzati dal pubblico. These are certain, uh, what needs to be discussed is whether they're going to fall back on, on private citizens or they're going to be taken up by instead the public uh, sphere. Perché la BCE, la Banca Centrale Europea, eh, finanzia il eh, sistema privato con tassi di interesse vicini allo zero. Uh, because the European Central Bank is financing the private debt uh, with uh, interest rates uh, close to zero. Mentre sui debiti dei paesi dell'Europa il comportamento non è lo stesso. Whereas its behavior uh, regarding the countries of Europe is different. It's different, it's, uh, <laughs> it's much higher. Ma molto, molto più, molto più alto. Per questo, insisto, c'è una dominanza politica economica della, della finanza. So I insist there is definitely a predominance private. of uh, the private finance. Che è riuscita, che è riuscita a far passare l'idea che i propri interessi coincidono con gli interessi generali which uh, has, has succeeded in, in, uh, in conveying this idea that his own interest coincides with the general interest. Mentre gli interessi degli stati no. Whereas the interests of the countries uh, do not coincide with okay. um, È vero che la situazione sociale e sindacale tedesca è migliore di quella di molti paesi europei. It is true that the social and the union condition, the union's conditions of Germany is better than many other countries. Però dai tempi di Schroeder, but uh, from the time of Schroeder on, è iniziata una deregolamentazione e una nuova politica sociale in Germania. Has begun uh, a new deregulation and, and, and a new politics. Uh, that, is that is changed in Germany. Sia nel mercato del lavoro che nella contrattazione collettiva, both in the job market and in the collective negotiation, al punto che eh, i sindacati tedeschi stanno discutendo da tempo sulla tutela della legge. To the extent that the German unions uh, have been discussing at length uh, problems uh, regarding the application of the law. Well, la tutela della legge. Yeah, the, the, sopra the, il contratto. Sopra, sì, sopra la il salario minimo. Yeah, il testo no, dice about, about legislated minimum wage. Vuol dire che la contrattazione ha difficoltà. Perché, perché il contratto è più debole. Perché il contratto è più debole. Ecco. Ehm, da questo punto di vista la situazione italiana, che è molto degenerata, From this point of view, the situation of, in, of Italy, which is uh, quite bad at the moment, esaspera alcuni aspetti che però non nella forma in cui esistono in Italia possono interessare altri paesi europei. Exacerbate certain aspects that uh, might interest also uh, other countries, even though not in the same form that they take in Italy. Eh, da molti anni in Italia i governi di centrodestra si sono posti l'obiettivo di modificare la Costituzione. Uh, for many years, uh, the right-wing coalition of government in Italy uh, decided to have as a goal also a modification of the Constitution. Sia le parti sociali, sia quelle relative all'accentramento dei poteri politici both in terms of social groups and also in terms of the centralization of uh, the political power. Berlusconi sostiene che la nostra Costituzione è comunista. Berlusconi believes that our Constitution is a communist one. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes, eh, però anche in Europa con eh, la costituzionalizzazione della concorrenza 
but also in Europe with uh, the, uh, the bringing uh, to a constitutional level uh, the economic competition. Si rompe l'equilibrio sociale delle costituzioni nel dopoguerra. The, the risk is to break the, the equilibrium of the European constitution uh, the world uh, uh, edited uh, in the aftermath of World War II. Eh, in maniera particolare, eh, l'attenzione del nostro governo in questo momento è concentrata su un articolo che sostiene la necessità dell'intervento pubblico quando derivano danni alla collettività a causa dell'intervento privato. Uh, particularly uh, in this current moment, the attention of our government is focused on an article of the Constitution that um, regards uh, situations in which uh, a public intervention is required to fix situations provoked by a um, private um, agency. Um, dando quindi una priorità non all'equilibrio sociale ma all'interesse privato. And so um, this doesn't give priority to uh, the social uh, stability but actually to the private interest, to the interest of the private people. In sostanza siamo al superamento del modello sociale europeo, uh, dell'economia sociale di mercato. This means that we are uh, reaching uh, uh, a point in which we are moving uh, away from the system of the welfare state and the social uh, system that in your was Economia developed. sociale di mercato. Yeah, so um, the, the social economy uh, that as we know, as a model. Um, è preoccupante questo, uh, questa, questa posizione, non solo perché, no, È preoccupante questa posizione perché in questa direzione, stante la crisi, possono spingere importanti forze economiche e non solo quelle politiche. This is an extremely dangerous uh, situation because in this scenario uh, uh, economical uh, forces are gaining power uh, also in contrast to political ones. Io credo che a crescita zero Permanendo la crescita zero per molti anni, at the, at the rate of growth zero for cost, many years, costituzioni che hanno funzionato bene in periodi di crescita del 5 e 6 per cento entreranno in crisi. Uh, constitutions that have well functioned when uh, the growth the mm, growth rate was around five or six percent uh, now are probably going to enter in a situation of crisis. Eh, Nell'Europa abbiamo assistito a un tentativo di accelerazione con la direttiva Bolkstein. Uh, in Europe we have witnessed uh, an attempt at accelerating this with uh, this uh, Bolkstein Directive. Right, right, right. Right. Bolkstein Directive. Che avrebbe, che avrebbe eh, superato leggi e costituzioni nazionali, se applicate. Which would have bypassed uh, constitution and national laws had it been applied. La domanda che mi pongo è con un capitalismo in crisi quale democrazia? My question is uh, with a capitalist system in such crisis uh, what democracy is possible? Questo è il problema prima del big il più grande problema che abbiamo. This is the biggest problem we have. E poi l'ultima domanda, il governo Berlusconi tutte le volte che ha vinto le elezioni. The Berlusconi government every time it has won the elections in Italy. Come primo atto as a first action ha sempre diviso le organizzazioni sindacali italiane. Has always divided the union organizations in Italy. In termini espliciti, lui eh, ha sempre detto che eh, in Italia occorre battere la CGL. In explicit terms, he has always asserted that in Italy there is the need for defeating the CGL.
considerata da Berlusconi un sindacato comunista. Which is considered uh, by Berlusconi as a communist union. Eh, ed è vero che con la crisi delle forze politiche italiane di sinistra and it is true that with the moment of crisis of the left the leftist forces in Italy the leftist parties in Italy iniziata alla fine degli anni 80 that began at the end of the 80s l'unica opposizione reale a Berlusconi in Italia è la CGL e la magistratura the only um, The only, op the only real opposers to Berlusconi at the moment are the unions and the legal... No, the CGL. Yeah, the, the CGL and... And the magistratura. And the law system. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Per okay. concludere, una battuta. Berlusconi, negli anni 70, aderiva a una loggia massonica in the 70s Berlusconi was actually a member of uh, a Mason House of the Lodge. Masonic Lodge uh, P2, yeah, segreta, 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 segreta. A, secret, a secret association che aveva un piano per modificare eh, le leggi e la Costituzione italiana that uh, held the plan, that had a plan uh, for modifying uh, the articles of our Constitution tra i quali incrementare il potere del Presidente del, del Consiglio among which increasing the power of the Prime Minister eh, con l'elezione diretta dal popolo e superando eh, la forma parlamentare with a direct election from the people and bypassing instead an agreement within the, the, the Parliament il controllo della pubblica accusa della magistratura uh, the control over um, what could be um, um, public indictment. Yeah. La magistratura inquirente. Public No, it's, it's um, public administration. No, administration. No. No. Magistratura. No, public public indictments. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, e la divisione dei sindacati. And again, the division between uh, you. Uh, Berlusconi persegue questo piano organico. This is the line that Berlusconi has pursued and it's kind of an organic okay. plan. Okay, so thank you very much to stay in time and you have to leave. I have one, or I have two final questions. Maybe you can answer them shortly. One, or we have a lot of open questions, but one question is what your description, what would that um, say to the US-European relationship in the future? And this morning we had a seminar where it was said that there is a merger of the left in Germany. Uh, maybe there is a new party movement in Italy. You, uh, you have uh, on the nuclear question um, uh, uh, maybe a new movement, the women's movement against Berlusconi. You have the new left movement in France, so it was said the left is growing up in Western Europe. What we have heard under these conditions, I would say, all these growing up of left are answers to national uh, po policies. Uh, that is also not a part of European policy. It's, there is no European policy by the left. So which advice would you give when you say, Michael, especially you said, uh, there is the neoliberalism in thinking, in arguing, in the terms of the left, where you can see it, what should we do to, to have a real left alternative or to have a real left answer concerning this European policy by the capitalist? Maybe you start. Mm. Um, yes, what, what shall, should we do? Well, uh, I give you one example. There is a group Uh, which is a bunch of economists, so these terrible people. He's, uh, yeah, he is a philosopher, but he is uh, accepted and invited again. <laughs> so, uh, which is, and they produce this already for several years, the Euro memo. Well, these are economists from more or less all uh, EU countries, member countries. There are Italians, there are Brits, there are French, uh, Greek, and so on. Oh, this is just an example. You can, in, in intellectual terms, uh, produce some projects and plans and concepts 
uh, this last one describes in a lot of detail what would be the way out and outlines also the concept of a quite coherent, uh, Europe at the European level, uh, structure, uh, policy of structural reforms. Hmm? So I would uh, advise everybody, you get this in different languages, whatever language you like, you will get it in Italian, in English, in Greek and so on. So get it, uh, read it, study it uh, and join this bunch of people because these are uh, very open uh, left-wing uh, intellectuals uh, which uh, have uh, links to many parties of the left within Europe. So you will find communists, social democrats, left socialists, green uh, uh, people, party affiliations, do not matter. And this sort of uh, joint intellectual effort I would very strongly advise to support and to join and to continue uh, in the long run. Uh, with, with respect to the US and uh, to the United uh, to Europe, I can only uh, say what I have already said many times. Well, we are actually competitors and we are rivals, but the Europeans are always pretending that they are not. It would already change a lot if we were honest enough to say, well, yes, we are. We are fighting also an economic battle against the United States of America. We are not allies, we are allies in military terms, we are not allies in economic terms. There is no transatlantic economic uh, union. Uh, there are transatlantic, uh, well-established cooperations between the ruling classes, but we are not part of them. Huh? <laughs> and if we say we will not give the European Union to the ruling classes and to the ruling classes only, it is, belongs to us. It means automatically that we will have a strong impact upon our attitude towards China, Asia and also the United States of America. And we are rivals. We are not enemies, but we are rivals. And we should act as such, but openly, very clearly and also uh, establish our goals. So, now we <laughs> I for sure like to take up the propaganda bit on the euro yeah, memo yeah, has already okay. been done. <laughs> so I can uh, concentrate on the difficult question, how can this be done? And there I think there is one principle of hope, that within catastrophes, and there are going to be catastrophes, there is always the need to change the direction of your action. We have seen this with Angela Merkel changing her policy on nuclear energy. And I think this is exemplary. So the, the coming crises, the common critical situations will create necessities to draw conclusion out of the underlying fact that the old German European model is exhausted. But this does not open an opportunity to go back to the old national social state. This is finished. So what we need is an alternative on the European level. And this is very hard to digest for the left. Uh, but it will have to digest it. And it will have to understand that there shall and should be European solutions in a Europe which is occupied by the enemy. But the enemy has no way of solving the, the European problems. And this learning by rote in catastrophic situations is, in fact, the only hope we have. Thank you. Beh, dal punto di vista culturale, gli Stati Uniti dopo l'89 hanno assunto un'egemonia anche sulla sinistra europea. Uh, from a cultural point of view, definitely after the 1989, um, the United States have acquired hegemony also over the left. Germany? No, gli Stati Uniti hanno assunto yeah. l'egemonia. Ah, sì, sì. eh, in maniera particolare eh, con Clinton eh, Schroeder, Blair, eh, D'Alema eh, si è discusso apertamente anche di superare eh, il prodotto più importante dell'Europa che è stato la socialdemocrazia. 
in particular in the era of Clinton Blair, the Lehman Schroeder, there was a discussion about how to move on from the social democratic model. E anche quindi conseguentemente del modello sociale europeo. And also consequently uh, to move on from uh, the European social model. Gli Stati Uniti considerano l'Europa un alleato importante. The United States regard Europe as a very important uh, ally or interlocutor at least. Ma non vogliono che assuma un forte potere politico. But they do not want that uh, Europe takes a very strong political leadership. E infatti hanno lavorato per l'allargamento continuo dei confini dell'Europa. Indeed, they have worked uh, subcutaneously for the extension of the borders of Europe. E non per consolidare maggiormente l'unità raggiunta. And not, certainly not to consolidate the achieved unity. E per ragioni politiche ed economiche. But for political and economic reasons. E no, io penso che Dobbiamo ricostruire un pensiero forte di sinistra in Europa. I think that we need to build again a strong left thought in Europe. Che eh, non ripudi la storia eh, della sinistra europea, ma la, eh, la aggiorni. Which would not uh, repudiate the tradition and the history of the European left, but in a way it would update it. Anche in questo campo la Germania può essere centrale. Even in this, in this field, from, from this point of view, Germany can, can play a crucial role. Perché abbiamo una sinistra legata al mondo del lavoro più strutturata che negli altri paesi. Because in Germany we have a, um, a left which is more structured and closer to uh, the world of the workers with respect to other countries. Eh, senza una forte ripresa politica, noi avremmo tanti movimenti di protesta a causa della crisi. Uh, without um, a decisive uh, coming back of economy to certain levels, we will see uh, the rising of several movements of protest. In molti, strati, in molti strati sociali. Of several social classes. Contradizioni tra i giovani, uh, conflicts among the youth, eh, le donne Women, che pagano un prezzo più alto alla crisi, which are paying a higher prices, a uh, higher price for the crisis, e tanti altri i, i poveri che stanno aumentando, the increasing of the poor, gli immigrati, immigrants, eccetera. eccetera. Ma eh, senza un forte pensiero politico e un forte riferimento nel mondo del lavoro, questi movimenti rischiano di essere frammentati e se anche se radicali. Uh, but without a strong political coordination and a strong political thought, even these movements uh, need uh, risk to remain fragmented and, and so also to uh, lose their, their power. And you said also without it being uh, related to the world of labor. Eh, per concludere, eh, se non saremo in grado di ipotizzare una nuova società, una nuova idea di società, if we will not be able to conceive, to, to conceptualize a new idea of society, eh, tutti resteremo interni alle contraddizioni del sistema. We will all remain within the contradictions of the system. E il capitalismo si è dimostrato molto capace di governare le proprie contraddizioni. And the capitalist system has proved itself to be very capable of ruling over his own contradictions. Okay, thank you very much. As a result, I would say we have to strengthen our cooperation within the European Union as in the left as we like they would do it in America then we can fight together.